104 days, 100, 304 days after the murder of Mike Brown. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the atmosphere here in St. Louis leading up to the grand jury announcement. I mean, it's tense um, in terms of, you know, you already you have a community that's already grieving, already historically traumatized and re-traumatized by the image of this baby's body laying in the street for four and a half hours, high level repression from the police, and then as uh, late as last night, uh, high level police repression outside the police department, Ferguson Police Department, night before a pastor arrested with a in collar and with a vest that said clergy. Um, you know, the people have presented 19 rules of engagement. The police have already, you know, broken most of them now. Um, they've stockpiled some two quarter million dollars in weaponry. Uh, and it seems like they're preparing for war uh, on Americans who are are trying to engage uh, in the First Amendment rights. Within the past hour, Missouri Governor Jay Nixon has signed a state of emergency, which would in effect activate the National Guard ahead of the grand jury's decision coming down in the Michael Brown case. Well, I know the governor announced that he will be deploying the National Guard in the coming days uh, in anticipation of a decision by uh, the uh, grand jury uh, out in Clayton. My whole life is a state of emergency, man. I'm, you know, I've seen one of those before. I, I didn't shake it that one. I ain't shaking it this one. Um, I, I find it strange that he caused a state of emergency um, off some people um, being chalked and laying down in the street yesterday. Um, so that lets, lets you know the fear level of our elected officials and our Democrats who are supposed to represent us. So at the UN, um, the DOJ representative's res response was, you know, the Mike Brown criminal and civil cases are both pending investigations. She can't give me any information, blah, blah, blah. The same thing they would tell me on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean is what she told me in Geneva. But um, at that point, I wasn't even requesting specifically information from her regarding the Mike Brown case. I wanted to know, in your role, what can you do about this imminent threat? Like, what's going to happen? <laughs> after the $300,000 they've spent on new weapons and armaments when this announcement is made. So y'all just gonna sit back and, and watch it happen again? Like, so not even completely aside from the Mike Brown case, what are you doing to make sure there is not more bloodshed on the streets at the hands of this law enforcement that has gone completely rogue? The city is, like, pretty much everybody is on pins and needles. Like, what's gonna happen? When are you, I mean, why won't you just say, like, when you're going to release it? But it's all part of the power game, right? So you literally have people fearful, like, gun sales have gone up 50% in this. In, like, I mean, you just got people running around because they don't know what is going to happen. And you're just building this tension and building this anxiety. We now have the Ku Klux Klan that's like, they're going to, like, shoot rounds in the unarmed citizens the police i don't think have made any statement about that today it's just like it's complete pandemonium and they could quell it they could completely stop it but as with everything else they're handling it completely irresponsibly and inappropriately you gotta understand we're dealing with an entity who does this what is going on here all over the world you know what i'm saying united states corporation because it's not a it's not a a, a country it's a corporation they go all over the world in the name of democracy and tear down regimes and flatten them out and put who they want in power and build that back up. They've done it to us before. So who's to say they won't do it again? Then they have better technology. They already put it out that they have this much money and they bought this with the money. So it ain't like they're not telling us that niggas, y'all play around or y'all want to, we're going to do you like we did y'all ancestors. Again, they got a lot of people to fight this bitch till the death. You know what I'm saying? They got some people that are saying they ain't going home at all. So it's going to be y'all or me. I've been asking people about the history of St. Louis. You know, one guy told me that they never had an uprising when King was killed, you know, when X was killed. They never burnt nothing down. They never, you know what I'm saying, took to the streets. It also was one of the last places that slaves, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, that slavery was abolished. It's, it's built up on post-traumatic slave syndrome, and if you you know you um, you actually get your freedom papers and you see the uh, you know uh, the watchmen or, 
or you know the slave owner coming back or the slave master coming back to come get you that's trauma the same way the police come and the captains and they parade up there in the press conference um, they put in trauma and fear into kids uh, spirits say right now it's kind of like a calm before the storm you know everybody's kind of trying to figure out what the date you know release is going to be and you know everybody's kind of trying to get prepared you know but it's kind of an eerie feeling, you know what I mean? Because you, you, you already know what's coming, but you don't really know what's, what's really going to come, you know? And that's, that's what I'm ready, you know? I want, I'm ready for them to go on and release. Some mother. Puts teddy bears and lights candles and makes funeral arrangements. In America. Every other day. Last, there's a mother in New York City right now planning the funeral for her son, unarmed. I want to live in a world where children do not suffer, bleed, and die. Like, that, 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 that's just not an option. It's so much bigger now, like, if he's not indicted, or he is, who gives a fuck? We're not stopping. This is the resistance. This is the Hunger Games. And whoever's listening to this shit, y'all either need to get on board or move the fuck out our way. This is not the Civil Rights Movement. This is not We Shall Overcome. We are nonviolent. We are peaceful. We're aggressive. They're going to have to kill us. They're going to have to shoot us. Because we're not, we know what justice looks like. We know what controlling our community, patrolling our community, policing our community. We know what the economic resources can bring in our community. We know what we need. Our generation, we powerful, we intelligent. I mean, an indictment would be nice. You know, demilitarization of the police, right? You know, the Organization of Black Struggle put out some demands, the Don't Shoot Coalition talks about the ways in which police can be held accountable. But you know, Ron Niebuhr says, we find proximate solutions to insoluble problems. So we're gonna always be trying to be like, okay, we got that right, we messed that up, let's fix it, right? Because democracy is an organism. It's not an institution. It's a living and breathing thing, right? Like, you know, part of the Constitution is a living document, right? At its construction, black people are not part of it. But through nonviolent civil disobedience, we stretch the Constitution to include us. How do we create a space where mothers do not have to and their cousins and their nephews and their homies don't have to lay teddy bears and light candles and make makeshift memorials in their stead because democracy has betrayed them. And every time we light one of those candles, we burn a little bit of democracy out. And it could be, history may record at this moment that you know this was a crumbling empire and we were in its dying days. And I don't have much hope in America, but I have hope in young people. So we're going to have to continue to organize, continue to resist, continue to take the streets because there's nothing uh, for us to do but to lose our chains.